This is another sign of the times. Another Earth could be near, scientists say. Another Earth could be circling the star right next door to us. Astronomers have announced that they have detected a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri, the closest neighbor to our solar system. Intriguingly, the planet is in the star's Goldilocks zone, where it may be neither too hot nor too cold. That means liquid water could exist at the surface, raising the possibility for life. Although observations in recent years, particularly by NASA's Kepler Planet Finding Mission, have uncovered a bounty of Earth-sized worlds throughout the galaxy, this one holds particular promise because it might someday, decades from now, be possible to reach. It's 4.2 light years, or 25 trillion miles away from Earth, which is extremely close in cosmic terms. One scientist likened it to a flashing neon sign. I'm the nearest star, and I have a potentially habitable planet, said R. Paul Butler, an astronomer at the Carnegie Institution for Science and a member of the team that made the discovery. The leader of the team that made the discovery, reported in the journal Nature, said, We know there are terrestrial planets around many stars. We kind of expected that nearby stars would contain terrestrial planets. This is not exciting because of this. The excitement is because it is the nearest one. Beyond the planet's size and distance from its parent star, much about it is still mysterious. Scientists are working off computer models that offer mere hints of what's possible. Conditions could be Earth-like, but they could also be hellish like Venus, or cold and dry like Mars. There's no picture of the planet, which has been designated Proxima b. The astronomers detected it indirectly, studying by a telescope the light of the parent star. They zeroed in on clock-like wobbles in the starlight as the colors shifted slightly to the reddish end of the spectrum, then slightly bluish. The oscillations caused by the bobbing back and forth motion of the star as it pulled around by the gravity of the planet are similar to how the pitch of a police siren rises or falls depending on whether the patrol car is traveling toward or away from the listener. From the size of the wobbles, they determined that Proxima b is at least 1.3 times the mass of Earth, although it could be several times larger. A year on Proxima b, the time to complete one orbit around the star, lasts just 11.2 days. Although the planet, lost in the glare of the star, cannot be viewed by current telescopes, astronomers hope to see it when the next generation is built a decade from now, and the planet's proximity to Earth gives hope that robotic probes could someday be zooming past the planet for a close-up look. A privately funded team of scientists and technology titans have announced Breakthrough Starshot Initiative, a project to develop and launch a fleet of iPhone-sized spacecraft within two to three decades. Their proposed destination is the Alpha Centauri star system which includes two larger sun-like stars in addition to Proxima Centauri. This newly discovered planet is much closer to its parent star, about 5 million miles apart than Earth is to the Sun, 93 million miles. Even Mercury, the innermost planet of our solar system, is 36 million miles from the Sun. While Proxima b might be similar to Earth, its parent star, Proxima Centauri is very different from the Sun. It is tiny, belonging to a class of stars known as red dwarfs, with only about 12% of the mass of the Sun, and about 1 600th the luminosity, so dim that it cannot be seen from Earth with the naked eye. Thus, Proxima b, despite its closeness to the star, 
receives less warmth than Earth, but enough that water could flow on the surface. Whether the planet has liquid water or an atmosphere is pure speculation at this point. If the planet formed close to the star, it could be dry and airless, but it might also have formed farther out and migrated inward to its current orbit. It is also possible that the planet formed dry and was later bombarded by comets or ice-rich asteroids. There are viable models and stories that lead to a viable Earth-like planet today. Even if it is habitable, scientists studying the possibility of life elsewhere in the universe spiritedly debate whether planets around these red dwarfs are a promising place to look. Small stars are more erratic, especially during their youth, and eruptions off the star's surface could strip away the atmosphere from such planets. Levels of X-rays and other high-energy radiation bombarding the planet would be 100 times that on Earth, the scientists said. The close orbit suggests that the rotation of the planet would probably be gravitationally locked by the star's pull, just as the same side of the moon always faces Earth, one side of Proxima b is probably eternally bright, always facing the star, while the other is ever dark. Additional visible light observations further convinced the scientists that they were not being fooled by variations in the star itself, erroneously mimicking the presence of a planet. There are hints of perhaps another planet, perhaps more, but those hints are still ambiguous, the scientists said. The discovery could provide impetus for planet-finding telescopes. There is a proposal for a small space telescope costing less than $175 million dedicated to the search for planets in Alpha Centauri. While it would not be powerful enough to spot Proxima b, its existence would give more confidence that terrestrial planets also orbit the two sun-like stars there. It just raises the public awareness there's a new world just next door. It could be a major shift in people's minds. Yes, it's humankind's destiny to go to the stars and colonize the universe. Genesis Chapter 1 In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. 3. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 4. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. 5. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening and there was morning, the first day. 6. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. 7. And God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. 8. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And all these are more signs of the times.